What do you think? I think we're dead meat. Real dead meat. You're dead meat! Go ahead and laugh, you guys. If I ever find a little bastard of business, a dead meat. Welcome to the Dead Meat Podcast, an extension of the YouTube channel Dead Meat. I'm James. I'm Chelsea, and we're engaged, and we like to get scared together. Mm-hmm. This week, we're reviewing Freaky. By Blumhouse. I asked on Twitter if there were any movies that you'd like us to cover that are recent, like new releases, because mm-hmm. those you know, those tend to do well. People get excited when we yep. cover the new stuff. <laughs> and that works for me because I can't edit clips in of the film because it currently is not available for home uh, release. So I can't like put clips in. Yeah. It's only, it is available for streaming. Yes. Uh, so go ahead and check it out. But there's not like a I can't, file. Yeah, that it we would. Can... It, it would be not very legal. No, it would. It would me. not be. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, we're gonna do freaky, which we kind of talked about in our lightning round review. Our lightning round review episode mm-hmm. a few weeks ago. So we briefly talked about it because we got to see a screener of it and we couldn't talk about it at all in detail because it wasn't out yet. Yeah, and also the thing was that the screener we watched back then, it had like the watermark with my name on it in big print and yeah. uh, it was low res that's, and it affects your viewing it, and enjoyment of the movie. That's the thing. It's it's a weird thing where it's cool to get screeners of stuff and it's easier to just catch up on stuff, especially if you're, yeah, you're a film critic and there's a ton of movies and it's easier to just, you know, if you get a screener, great. I'm more incentivized to go out of my way to watch it because, hey, free movie. (laughs) But when you get a screener, there's always a giant watermark with your name on it so that you can't like upload it it somewhere. Yeah, you can't rip it and put it online because clearly it's yours. They do that with scripts too. like scripts of stuff will have the actor's name like watermarked all over it and stuff. Um, so yeah, the last version we saw was really low quality and had and no James's subtitles, name you all know. Over it. Yeah. yeah, so it all that all that stuff affects your viewing experience. And, it does. Yeah. Uh, I was I'm glad that we got to rewatch it because I actually enjoyed it more this time. Through. I did too. I liked it more the second time, which mm-hmm. is kind of fun. Um, and we did a a Twitter watch along with uh, the filmmakers and actors in it. And Kevin Smith was kind of like the host of it, which was cool. There was no stream or anything, but it was just on Sunday night. We streamed it. Everyone who was participating in the hashtag on Twitter, get freaky at home. They hit play at the same time. And then we all just kind of tweeted about it. It was fun. I think it's so funny that. So we do commentary tracks on Patreon of different movies. So if there's a movie that we haven't covered on the podcast or Kill Count, there we might have done a commentary track on it. There is a master list of all movies covered in every capacity by Dead Meat uh, available on my Twitter. Yeah. And yeah. the way we do that is we count down, okay, three, two, one, you hit play on your copy of the movie at the same time we do. And it's so funny that... No, even in like a thing where this is a, a major studio putting out a thing, we're all doing a watch along. It's still, there's no better way, I guess, than <laughs> to, we're all just going to hit play That's at the count of do. three. Uh, yeah, so this was directed and co-written by Christopher Landon, who is the man who began, I, I believe, with some paranormal activity movies, but I, I think more notably now brought us Happy Death Day and its sequel, Happy Death Day to You, writing and directing those films. So this is, a in the similar vein, a horror comedy with the slightest bit of a, a sci-fi twist to it. And I really like that he made this and that it's now becoming his wheelhouse, these horror spins on comedic classics such as in Happy Death Day, Groundhog's Day, and for this movie, Freaky Friday. Or, as apparently uh, some people who, I don't think it's an age thing because they came out around the same time, but some people are like, this looks like the hot chick. Which, like, what? I guess, you know, oh, with I Rob guess, Schneider. Oh, I guess, because it's a body swap It thing. is another body swap, and it is a, what, a, a high school girl who inhabits Rob Schneider's body? I don't remember I the last time I saw that movie. I... But no, it's. I think it's meant to be a Freaky Friday spin. Yeah, for sure. Because I think it was going to be called Freaky, Freaky Friday, Friday the, the 13th. 13th. Yeah. Yeah. Do we have confirmation about that? or is that I don't just... know. That could just be a thing that sounds like it should be true mm-hmm. that we heard somewhere maybe isn't. I, I think we just guessed that on our own because it does have the big titles. That's like uh, Thursday, Thursday the, 12th, the 12th, Wednesday the 11th. Yeah. yeah. 
a thing that I, I like about this too um, is, and it has been confirmed by one of the writers, Michael Kennedy, it was co-written by him and Christopher Landon, is that this is a very queer horror movie. This oh, yeah. This is a very, like, it is, you know, subtext basically becoming text at points. It's very, um, a lot of people ha- uh, requesting us to cover this said that they really enjoyed this because they felt they felt watching it that, oh, this is a this is queer horror. And oh, definitely. The, is, yeah. That was the intent of the film. There is that um, element to it. And I, I like that it's it's so fun. It's, you know, it's it's very sweet. And it's, I, I don't know, I just, because I think often um, one of the criticisms of my, criticisms I hear of, especially like media where it's intended to be, you know, gay representation, queer representation is that it's, it's it has to be sad or that it has to be serious. <laughs> mm-hmm. Um, there, That's why barrier gaze is a trope. It's like, you know, you can't have a happy gay couple. One of them has to die. And I just, I don't know. I like that we have this horror flick where we're not torturing a gay character. We're not making their life miserable. And it, I don't know, even if it's not explicitly a gay main character, it just happens to be because of the body swap. It's all like very, the lines here are blurred and, Gender, the lines of gender are blurred in this, which is kind of fun. But I, I like that it's a very sweet, nice movie. It's not yeah. mean about any of that stuff. No, for sure. Yeah. Uh, and Christopher Landon does that really well. Uh, there's a, you know another scene between a uh, mother and her daughter in this film, which reminds me of the scene in Happy Death Day, which, I mean, that still makes me tear know, up in Happy Death Day. And this is an equally sweet one. Yeah, just... Yeah, both of those movies and his paranormal activities, too, I think. They're not afraid to let characters be emotional mm-hmm. and let characters have vulnerable moments and let there be really touching human moments. And I've said before that I think that's so important, especially in kind of a slasher movie. Because to me, I'm very easily bored by slashers, but what makes a fun slasher like Texas Chainsaw is I kind of care about those characters. In Texas Chainsaw? I don't know. Maybe not. <laughs> No, I, Sally is just so... Sally, sure, yeah. Sure, okay, maybe that was a bad example. There's other <laughs> but no, for sure, slashers work best when you do care about the meatbags getting killed. Yeah. Like, when it's just lined up bodies that fall down one by one, it starts to get a little repetitious. Right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and I think that's such a testament to his filmmaking abilities that Christopher Landon is able to have very funny moments, very poignant moments, and what I assume to be some scary moments, uh, it's hard for me to properly gauge that just because my calibration's all fucked up on what's actually scary or not. But to yeah. fit that all into a movie successfully and to not have anything come off as like trying too hard, I think is it's just very impressive. Yeah. And again, I've met Christopher Landon once in the at a screening for Happy Death Day to You, and he was just such a nice guy, and all the cast and crew, everyone said. He's a great guy, awesome person to work under. Yes, so Freaky stars Catherine Newton, who you may know from Paranormal Activity 4 or more recently, Detective Pikachu. I forgot she was in Paranormal. So, yeah, she would already know Christopher Landon. And then uh, she... Oh, yeah, because he did the... What's the kid's name in that one? Robbie? Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Did you ask her about Robbie? I forgot to ask her about Robbie when she was on What's Your Favorite Scary Movie? Let's see if we can get back in touch and be like, how's Robbie? (laughs) Robbie's probably a full-ass adult now. Yeah. (laughs) And she plays Millie, a high school student who has a body swap with... uh, a local serial killer known as the Blissfield Bu- the Blissfield Butcher, played by Vince Vaughn. And uh, Vince Vaughn is absolutely hilarious in this Vince movie. Vince Vaughn's so good in this. He's so funny in this. And Catherine Newton, is um, her role is less comedic than his, since, you know, the funnier thing is <laughs> 6'5 Vince Vaughn. Uh, being inhabited by a teenage girl. Yeah. But she does such a good job playing a serial killer possessing her body. Yeah. It's great. I think the best scene of hers, or one that I liked the most this time, is where she's just in the kitchen in the beginning. Or when she wakes up in the bedroom and like sees the panic at the disco poster. <laughs> and she spits out a retainer. And yeah. just the, yeah, the little things and choices that I think are so funny. And I'm glad that you get enough of Vince Vaughn earlier. Like, I I think it's cool you get the cold open and you need that cold open to be able to compare her mannerisms with 
that hulking thing we see the figure we see at the beginning with her because i think if you don't have that gut that cold open with the rich kids in the big mansion yeah let's talk about it's that it's not as fun it's kind of its own little short story uh and yeah it, it's just stupid teens like pretty insufferable teens who get immediately murdered by vince vaughn yeah and i'm assuming he's doing all his own uh, most of his own stunts here because it's got to be hard to find a 6'5 stunt performer who like matches his build. Vince Vaughn is a big man. A big dude, and so yeah. when he bursts through the, the glass doors in a direct homage to Jason in Friday the 13th, the final chapter, I'm wondering if that's just him or a stunt performer. I'm not sure. That's the other thing with this movie. <laughs> so many horror movie Easter eggs. Yes, all over a lot. The place. Ones that we missed the first time that we saw pointed out online. Great shining reference. Really, yeah. Really yeah. Fun. Oh man, lots of good um, stuff. Um yeah. But that's why I love getting this kind of mini movie within a movie at the beginning, because when we do see Catherine Newton later, it's a nice it, it's nice for her to be able to have this opener for us as an audience to compare and realize, oh, she's doing a very good job at emulating this character. Yes. I think if we had less time with him at the beginning, that performance, it wouldn't be as fair or as, yeah, I think it's nice that we get that too. It's also great because it establishes who the Blissfield butcher is and how brutal his murders are. Because yes. that's the other thing about this movie. Happy Death Day and its sequel were both PG-13, which was fine for those movies. But Freaky is R and the the kills just lean into that R. It's and it's beautiful. so great. The first kill has uh, the butcher shoving a bottle down a kid's throat and then breaking it and the shards come out of his neck. Yeah, it's a bottle of whiskey. Yeah. I was joking. I feel like, because it takes place at this, the opening scene rather with these all these teens who just get murdered. Mm. They're, they're not characters for the rest of this, but uh, it's this huge, like huge mansion. Oh yeah, it's got some tennis like, court and such. Such a big mansion and such weird shit in it like that's where this the knife comes from that this ritual is done with with the body swamp mm -hmm. that i'm like because i think the character says oh yeah my dad collects all this stuff and yeah what's going on with dad and <laughs> what is this what is this like ready or not mansion like yeah cause that's even the ladola knife and we had to check because i oh, couldn't Dumas. remember yeah <laughs> what the name was and ready or not and so i was like is this a weird <laughs> connected but that wouldn't make any I, I, anyway just I, what's up with that guy i don't know man I, yeah we don't get any more backstory about where the night no, the dagger fine. came you from right you get a, you, you get it. a little bit it's like always oh, an aztec ritual knife mm -hmm. but with an inscription in spanish which i thought was kind of interesting because <laughs> an aztec knife would not have spanish on it unless like a, some conquistador got a hold of it i also like that the beginning with the i think it's kind of purposely a really rich um set of kids in a rich family and like you know they're just they're you know hot teens hanging out it reminded me of like it felt like a throwback to 90s horror where everyone is really rich for some reason mm -hmm. and lives in really nice houses and is super hot and it it's kind of neat that it was like this contrast between this mini 90s horror movie in the beginning and then our main character who um you know, her dad is dead and her mom works at a thrift store and is clearly struggling to provide for like they clearly like she gets made fun of in school for not wearing clothes that are new. And yeah. so there's like a very deliberate contrast there between. The oh, yeah. I didn't think about classes. That. Yeah. Which I thought was neat. I think modern horror or even just more modern stuff in general, we're seeing more characters that aren't just wealthy on screen yeah because i feel like and you know this could just be an over generalization but in 90s media you just have so much stuff where it's like the cast of friends it's like those characters mm -hmm. just uh have these lush apartments and just everyone seems way more well off than the audience watching them yeah i mean we always talk about how Stu's house and scream exactly. is a dream house and and yeah this this intro does it seems like a direct reference to scream because when the parents come home they scream just like casey becker's parents yeah, did yeah into at the, the end of that title cool right mm -hmm. yeah yeah that's right there's um yeah we got the michael myers reference he does the head, head tilt, tilt yeah. i think texas chainsaw he kind of puts uh the last girl on a like i don't know what the fuck's sticking out of the wall but he like he sticks her, her on it, it yeah. and it's you don't actually really See, it's like, you know, it's very Texas. It's like a meat hook or something. But mm -hmm. there's also a tennis racket 
being snapped in half and stabbed into either side of a dude's head. It's like the bow and arrow kind of like gag. Mm -hmm. I feel like that was probably the easiest makeup. Yeah, oh, for sure. Do. You just pop, you know, <laughs> one of those on either side of your head. You're good. Um, I do remember, I think it was when we interviewed our friend Richard about doing horror makeup, that if you do stump, like something like that at home, you might think, oh, it's easy to, you know, make it look like I have something coming out of my head or people will do like a pop can being shoved into their eye. Like they just cut a pop can and like makeup. He said that's actually really dangerous unless you have a purposely breakaway item or foam or something. Don't use don't use real stuff oh, yeah. because if you fall the wrong way and you have something Ooh. like the end of a tennis racket just up against your head, it's very dangerous. Yeah. Just pro tip. If you got <laughs> ideas and we said, that, hey, that could be easy. Maybe. Hey, everyone can do that. Yeah. Just be careful. <laughs> so yeah, we, so after this initial uh, opening sequence, we meet Millie we meet her mom, who I am pretty sure is kind of a Nightmare on Elm Street Definitely. reference. And in, in terms of just the mom being an alcoholic oh, and yeah, distant and dealing with vodka. some stuff. Yeah, we also meet Millie's older sister, who is the worst police officer. World's worst cop. I have ever Holy seen. Holy fuck. I have to laugh at how the police in general in this movie... I, I think I think it may be a case it, of not really knowing police and writing. I don't know. I think it's kind of a, like, because often when you watch a horror movie and it's like, you run into a few things. One, you run into why, you know, you could use a cell phone, which this movie does a good job of taking cell phones off the map and stuff. We have her, we just have her battery dying and we have the mom who is drunk oh, and, and she passes scene, yeah. out. Yeah, like it's good. It does a good job of choreographing mm -hmm. why we don't have cell phones readily available in moments where we would need them. And also you can, you often think in a horror, especially a modern one, well, why wouldn't you just call the cops? Mm -hmm. I don't know, man. Would you want to call the cops in this town? Or even when they do, it's kind of a shit show. I Listen, Charlene and other cops fire into the air multiple times. I don't think no matter how bad your police department is, you're going to have multiple police officers doing Shooting that into, in 2020. Like it's the fucking Wild West. Yeah, they're just like, know. everyone get down. Bro. I, <laughs> like you I'm can't not do that. I'm not surprised if that's happened <laughs> Or like before. Charlene and the end when she tries to fire and it's empty. She like looks... She she points, she points the it gun at her, at her face. face and pulls. You're like, oh, it's empty. She's still pulling the trigger. And all then it's pointed at her head. While she's trying to get him into the cell later, she puts her gun directly up to his back, which pretty sure you're not supposed to do because it allows them to like what he does, uh, disarm her pretty easily. Oh, like you, you don't can like use stick your, it. Like, in, yeah, but, exactly. Oh, it's just all these little things where I'm like, maybe you should have gotten a consultant, uh, but it would have made things I harder. I think it's hilarious. <laughs> I don't know. I Yeah, I wonder if it's on purpose or if it's just weird cop writing, but I also love the idea of just a bumbling police department. Yeah, I, I mean, I think it's like how with guns are often misused just because the people who are writing scripts tend not to be the type of people who are really familiar with how guns are used. I think it's just one of those things. It's why I also had to laugh. I think you're onto something there because after, oh, so yeah, we need to, we need to set some rules for our pronoun usage here because it's confusing because oh, sure. we have the body swamp. So we'll, we're going to say, so she is always the character of Millie, even when Millie is in the body of Vince Vaughn yes. and, and vice versa. He is always Vince Vaughn. That's how they use it in the movie. And he, yeah, even when he is in Catherine, Catherine Newton's, Newton's body or yes. Millie's body. Okay. Yes. So yeah, when so when she disarms Char, uh, her, her sister, the gun drop like it flies out of her hand mm -hmm. and i noticed this time no one goes to grab it yeah like have, that'd be useful <laughs> yeah and i just wonder if it's like we don't need a gun in the third act just mm -hmm. just leave it we gotta go guns and cell phones make things tough for writers <laughs> yeah they do that's just the facts mm -hmm. you know <laughs> mm -hmm. they're they're both things where especially with horror that you always got to find a way to exclude them yeah. from the story third annoying thing is any type of science because neil degrasse tyson will get on twitter and tell you how <laughs> wrong your movie is <laughs> and then everyone just ratios him for being annoying um so yeah we have this 
this family, it's these three women. The dad died a year ago, and it's, you They're know. All still kind of reeling from it. Family trauma. No one's dealing with it. Great. Mom is really attached, especially to her youngest, to Millie, because Millie is getting to be the age where she wants, you know, she's going to graduate, go to college, hopefully. Um, but it, it makes it, it seems like her mom doesn't want her to go to college because she wants her to stay around. You know, she doesn't want to lose another family member. And it's it's just none of it's good or healthy. Um, also, the mom in this only knows how to make food that's yellow. <laughs> yeah, you noticed that. I don't know why this... <laughs> I don't think this is on purpose, but the mom in this makes um, French toast and I think like eggs and she's cutting up. She makes banana pancakes. <laughs> we see her cutting up pineapple. She's just feeding her daughter just yellow food. It's the yellow diet. Yeah, just the yellow. The, the least healthy. If you had to pick a color, that's probably the least healthy. Mm, white's got to be up there. Oh, I guess if you're, if you're not <laughs> if you're lumping in, if food. you're not lumping in like like browns and beiges and whites with yellow, like color of the rain. But if you expand it, yeah, white is going to be the least <laughs> healthy food. Uh, the mother is played by Katie Finneran, who was uh, apparently, I think, Judy in the Night of the Living Dead remake. Oh, in okay. Yeah. yeah. The Tony Todd one, yeah. That's a fun remake, by the way. So she is also someone familiar with horror. And uh, yeah, so Millie, played by Catherine Newton, is she gets bullied in high school. And, you know, I guess saying that it's clear that they come from meager means helps sell that. But I do feel like it's a little bit like with the Carrie remake of it's hard for me to buy that this girl is getting uh, specifically teased as being ugly and unattractive because later there are some jocks she also plays the mascot at the football games which is hilarious but later some jocks are like oh and their their school's mascot is a beaver yeah and the jocks are like the only beaver no one would touch yeah maybe he put a bag on her head and like but yeah like put a bag on her head she's like she's cute you, you know she's, yeah it's like she's not even rocking the you know the joke thing that makes you ugly like glasses, the glasses up, yeah i mean they do the the makeup department does a good job um differentiating her as millie and then after vince vaughn takes over her body and like makes her up into a badass <laughs> yeah. it is a stark contrast but you know i i mean i i loved Catherine newton in this so i'm not going to complain about her getting work but maybe let some plain looking people Get some roles. <laughs> sure, yeah. <laughs> but it's, I think, yeah, I think a part of it too is I think bullies often, even if they're teasing you and calling you ugly, it's maybe even more so they can just sense that you're not confident about yeah. how you look regardless of how attractive you are and they will just say you're ugly because they know it It makes you uncomfortable. So, but yeah, I, yeah. She, she's a very cute girl. Yeah. <laughs> Same with fucking, uh, that bugged me in Jennifer's body too. I'm like, oh, bitch, you're a man. See you free. Yeah. Like, get out of here. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Millie's best friends are uh were the names uh Nyla and Josh. Yes. Nyla is a black woman and Josh is a uh gay man who is referred to by the police later. It's it's a very <laughs> this, funny this line when laugh, the police yeah. are like, Oh, the suspect's been spotted with a female black uh and male uh excited <laughs> and of course uh those characteristics lend themselves to the most trailer worthy line of the film when they're running away from who they believe is the butcher and he's like i'm you're black i'm gay we are so screwed yeah oh i was gonna say i love and i love his delivery of this i could listen to it on a loop over and over again i don't know why i just find his voice like extremely pleasing oh by the way the act the actors the it goes by they them right yes the actor is non-binary but the character's male mm -hmm. okay just in Misha case Ash Asherovich. okay just yes. in case we go back and forth and you're confused um i just like i refer to uh, Catherine Newton and Millie as the same. Like, I just go back and forth. Yeah. Um, when he leans in that door and is like, oh my God, it's a slaughterhouse. <laughs> I just <laughs> like the way he says it a lot. I don't like his line early when he's talking about taking advantage of drunk straight boys. <gasps> no. And the friend is like, Nyla's like, that sounds a little rapey. And he's like, good. And I'm like, what is that line? What the fuck? I know, like, oh. <laughs> yeah, and it hap it's like when we meet those characters. Yeah. So it really left a bad taste in my mouth for that character for a long time until later mm. I'm like, oh, he's he's like fun, I guess. But That's fair. It's a weird introductory conversation where I'm like, 
good. What? Just because you're gay doesn't make that okay, dude. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's weird. Sure, sure. Hey, want to talk about our sponsor this week, Shudder. You know Shudder. We love Shudder. Shudder is basically the Netflix of horror. Yes, it's a streaming service devoted entirely to our favorite genre and yours, horror. I love using Shudder. I've discovered so many fun things through it. They have these really cool playlists that I, last time I was looking for something to watch, I really appreciated how they organize their stuff. Let's say you don't really know Giallo films that well. They have a really great playlist with just essentials to get you started. They have an entire home invasion playlist. Like they get down to really, really specific subgenres that I really appreciate. And you'll discover things you, I guarantee you've never heard of. So this week on the podcast, we're talking about Freaky, which we discussed in our lightning round reviews episode. And in that episode, we also talked about Scare Me by Josh Rubin, directed by Josh Rubin. That's a Shudder original, highly, highly recommended. It's one where maybe if you're in a social pod, or you you know you're living with family and you want to check out something scary and maybe the people you're with for the holidays are eh. scare me is a great one it's scary enough but not it's not going to traumatize anyone it's a lot of fun it's very funny if you want to try shutter free for 30 days go to shutter.com and use the promo code deadmeat30 one more time, that is Shudder, S-H-U-D-D-E-R.com. Use promo code DEADMEAT30. 30 free days of Shudder. Our other sponsor this week is Kitty Poo Club. We're back at the Kitty Poo Club. A very stinky place to be. I love having a cat, obviously. She is the most spoiled cat on the planet. James and I are obsessed with her. But one thing that certainly is not fun about having a cat is changing the litter box. So after I got my surgery, I couldn't really lift stuff. So I, James had to change the litter for me because that's usually my job. And I also didn't really have a sense of smell for a little bit because I had all this packing up my nose. And oh man, the first time I changed her litter after finally getting a sense of smell back, I actually gagged. It was extremely unpleasant. I absolutely hate changing the litter box but you gotta do it we love our kitties and they deserve the best and they deserve a nice clean place to poop kitty poo club is here to help take away some of the pain of having to deal with a litter box kitty poo club is a delivery service that delivers cat litter to you in a pre-filled box the litter of your choice, which is nice. You have a big selection to choose from. The boxes are eco-friendly and recyclable. So at the end of every month, you actually recycle the box and Kitty Poo Club delivers you a new one with cat litter inside. So you don't actually ever have to change the old cat litter out of the box, which is again, the worst part. You can also customize your order based on how many cats you have and what type of litter you want. And they have a no risk guarantee and you can easily customize or cancel any time. So right now, Kitty Poo Club is offering you 20% off your first order when you set up auto shipments by going to kittypooclub.com and entering promo code DEADMEAT, all one word. Go to kittypooclub.com, promo code DEADMEAT to get 20% off when you set up auto shipments. And one more time, that is kittypooclub.com. And don't forget to enter promo code DEADMEAT at checkout. Yeah, I think, you know, we just get a day in the life of Millie as getting bullied and doing the mascot thing at the football game. And then after yeah. the football game, uh, everyone else leaves. And since her mom's too drunk. Oh, we should oh. Uh, make sure to point out one of her teachers is also a dick to her. That's right. Alan Ruck. Alan Ruck, the god, just <laughs> strolling into this movie being the biggest piece of shit of all time. Yes. I, I love Alan Ruck. I, mm -hmm. he's, he's just so good. And yet you haven't watched the Exorcist series from Fox, I do, where he I is do need to watch the that. dad, and he's great, and that series is great. But yes, he's most well known as Cameron from Ferris Bueller's Day Off. I will say, as a, as a teen girl watching Ferris, because I I've seen Ferris Bueller so many times, it's my favorite John Hughes easily. Mm -hmm. Um, I always had a crush on Cameron. And yeah, than Fer yeah, for over, sure. Over Broderick, mm -hmm. <laughs> for sure. I mean, Ferris is cute too, but Cameron is just. Adorable. I think Alan Ruck aged into. Uh, he's a handsome man. Handsome man right now, although he's rocking a he like friggin' he's got chops and hardcore uh, handlebar mustache that goes all that the way to his yeah. jawline. Yeah, some like weird Red Dead Redemption. Yeah, like, and yeah. he's a wood shop teacher who's <laughs> yeah. just the 
biggest dick this guy to Millie. this teacher it's just this weird it's like a teacher who is just so bothered by the girls that he teaches and doesn't mm-hmm. even try to hide it and that's totally what this guy is and he also does martial arts in his basement <laughs> evidently yeah he... which we do learn like yeah he knows different martial arts <laughs> i think he would get along with ian mcshane and hot rod <laughs> um <laughs> Dudes rock. <laughs> yes. And oh, yeah, the last character that we meet during her day at school is her crush, a guy named Booker, Booker, who very much like Carter from Happy Death Day, just a good guy. Just a good yeah, all guy. they're they're extremely they're just they're just nice dudes. I wouldn't go as far as to call them himbos. I don't think they're stupid, but they're no. pretty like dude, someone on Twitter called me himbo. Or they You're said himbo? they were like, James H D has big himbo energy. Oh my and god. And I, I like looked it up nice. and I was like what? I'm not <laughs> dumb. <laughs> it's just because you're nice. I think people use himbo too too liberally. Well, I think a a himbo is like Chris Hemsworth in Ghostbusters. Yeah, that's a himbo, right? Because he's not so bright. No, and you're you're smart. I think I'm I, smart. I think maybe it's because you're very smiley and nice and good looking, and people. Oh, thank you. Yeah, way to turn that into a positive. <laughs> <laughs> But that's what I'm saying is I don't think these guys are quite him, but they're just nice and smiley and mm-hmm. we never have any reason to dislike them and they're just good good dudes. Yes, and Booker is played by Uriah Shelton, who I don't watch it, but he plays, he's in Girl Meets World as Joshua Matthews, who in Boy Meets World was just a little baby. So it's that character oh, grown up. Because mm-hmm. you watched Boy Meets World. I watched the hell out of Boy Meets World. But yeah, so Booker is, yeah, she's got a big old crush on him and they He's have nice. shop class together. Seems like some, yeah, maybe not unrequited because obviously we learn later that Booker's in yeah, there too. Injured, yeah. But, yeah. She's just not confident about she's it. She's not confident enough. Mm-hmm. She should just, yeah. But I think that's why I, I like that this movie explores just being being a more confident person, especially. It's as, about, like, yeah, uh, learning to like who you are and accept who you are in your own body and such like that. It's it's a lot of that. Yeah, and not because I think if it was more bro- like if it was just that was the message and it wasn't as pointed as like how hard it is to be a a teen girl or an awkward girl or yeah, just uncomfortable in your own skin as a teen girl. It's like the worst thing ever. Mm-hmm. If, if it was more broad than that, I'd be like, all right, whatever. There's, there's plenty of stuff about learning to be confident, but I think that th- this is such like, this gets so much more specific and that she learns to be like, she becomes so confident in the body of this six foot five dude who is, hulking and strong and she looks nothing like herself she's not a a cute teenage girl even and and that i think she's able to just not really care about her like she's just less aware of herself and i think in that she becomes more confident and then that's when she has a really nice conversation with booker and yeah you know just the fact that she just stopped caring so much about you know her person Mm -hmm. when she's removed from her body and is looking completely like someone else she just can be her her true self and being confident is extremely attractive to guys named booker and to other people and everyone guys and girls Mm -hmm. and everyone Yeah. yeah and also that goes the other way too when we have vince vaughn in her body he the same way he doesn't give a fuck he's just Super stomping around that now. school and, and now everyone's into him it's not mm-hmm. that she she's not ugly we see like it's never that she was ugly it's just she didn't walk around like she owned the place and also had no emotions and therefore can't feel shame or embarrassment <laughs> <laughs> like yeah it's nice i think i think when it gets more specific and it goes into like that kind of stuff i like that it's a message about confidence I also want to say that the barking kid, the bully, he is in too many cooks. And I am so proud that I recognized him. Which is funny because you mentioned too many cooks in the opening scene when she's hiding in the closet from That's Vince right. Vaughn. Oh, my gosh. I just have too many cooks on the brain. I'm totally going to do an episode. Uh, want the actress who plays oh, the right. character that hides in the closet. Yeah. Um, and is Katie betrayed Atkins. by her her name. Yeah, her glowing name tag. <laughs> which yeah, I thought that's all I could think about in that that opening scene where she hides. But yeah, that actress. Uh, we're we're Twitter friends now, and yeah, if, if I do a too many cooks episode, which I'm I'm going to, it's just a matter of when. <laughs> she 
is going to be a guest in some capacity and we will ask her all of our burning questions about too many cooks. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, the kid who barks at her is like one of the very first fans. He's, he's in too many cooks when it's kind of normal. Yeah. Yeah. That's anyway. Funny. Uh, the, so yeah, she does the football game as the mascot and then everyone else leaves and she's left stranded because of her mom being passed out. And that's when the butcher shows up and he chases her down and he stabs her right in the middle of the football field with La Dola. Dola. And we get a crazy little like, uh, CGI. I think it goes to like the top of an Aztec tower tower it looks like. Yeah. And, uh, zooms in and out and he stabs her in the shoulder, but then he experiences the same Wound in his shoulder, and then uh, the worst cop in the world shows up shooting bullets into the air and uh, scaring him away. Yeah, but, like bullets have to come down. Yes, yes, they That's do. That's why you can't do that. Correct. <laughs> There's a cop at the end that does it in the uh, the school, or or not in the school, the old in, mill. The old mill, Or they have yeah. this party, but. At least uh, that goes into the ceiling, but, but still, but you don't know who's up there. you don't know who's up there. Who's up there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, ridiculous. Yeah. So, yeah, their their bodies don't swap until midnight. So that's a little bit of a, I don't know why this exactly. Is, yeah, the this magic. is something the first time we watched, I was I was confused. I think I was less confused this time, but mostly because I knew what was coming later. Uh, yeah, so he doesn't kill her. He, like, the stab, it, it hits her shoulder, so it doesn't kill her. And because it didn't kill her, it means the, sa- like, the sacrifice didn't work, and therefore their, their bodies swap. Okay. You have to, I think it has to be like a one stab kill for Got it. Yeah. Yeah, it's weird. And then it's for 24 hours or else it's permanent. So it sets a ticking clock device for they they have until midnight the following to night stab to stab him again. Yes. To swap back. To swap back. What I'm now confused about is so the knife okay, it basically says if the sacrifice does not work with this knife, and you, you don't kill them, your souls swap bodies. What is its intended usage then? <laughs> oh, like if it goes well? Is it just a, like, why would you use this knife then? I'm not sure. If you just want to kill. I think the butcher just grabs it because it looks cool. No, I know, yeah. but I'm saying yeah, what is it? Like, like, why? Intentionally? Yeah, like I'm if you're sure. doing a sacrifice, I wouldn't pick that knife first then if they're, if it's like. You know, By the way, maybe the, we'll get a freaky too, where it's explained like how in Happy Death Day too they explained how the the time loop co- was <laughs> caused. Right, yeah, yeah. Where it's like you don't need it, but okay. <laughs> very, yeah, very true. So yes, they swap at midnight, meaning the next morning when they wake up, they are in each other's bodies. Meaning the butcher wakes up in a high school girl's room with a, a mouth guard in, and <laughs> Millie wakes up in the middle of an abandoned mill. Oh my gosh, in, in a nightmare. In like blankets room. with a with a guy showing up asking for drugs <laughs> and then Got any jelly beans. Yeah, and asking for jelly beans, drugs and uh Millie in Vince Vaughn's body is like, "What do I look like? Do I look like a, a teenage girl?" And then one of my favorite lines is the guy being like, "What are you on, man? I want some of that. I want to feel like a teenage girl." <laughs> yeah. I want to feel like a teenage girl. <laughs> and I'll suck your I'll dick suck for your drugs. Dick. <laughs> All of it. Kevin Smith loved I'm, that line. I'm very glad this was rated R. Uh, yeah, I think that that line when it happens is, uh, I mean, with the gore, you're like, oh, it's R. But that line is a reminder of like, oh, and they can say shit too. It's, yeah, it's fun. <laughs> yeah. I Yeah, another uh, little reference. There's definitely a wig head or some kind of fake head with a bunch of pins stuck in it. It's yeah, pin, it looks like, like pinhead pin back head. there. Mm-hmm. Just the beginning with Vince Vaughn in this scene where he wakes up as Millie, like, his the way that he embodies her and talks like her again without it feeling like it's a joke. Yeah, like I literally was just saying, Alan Ruck's character reminds me of a teacher who always makes fun of the way you talk in class or something, which ugh, I hate. I I like still think about teachers that I've done <laughs> and get mad when I'm genuinely trying to answer a fucking question in class and all you can concentrate on is the way that I sound. But it's easy, I think, to have an actor who okay you're supposed to be a teenage girl trapped in your body go it's very easy to turn that into a joke mm-hmm. or it's funny like picking the wrong things from what you would think a teenage girl sounds like and focusing on that as being funny it really feels like he is genuinely trying to emulate this specific actress he's not putting on just generic teenage girl affect like oh my god do i sound like that he's actually 
he sounds like her, that actress, the way that she would deliver. So I appreciate this aspect of it. Too. And they give little character traits like she's always chewing on her fingers and he carries that over when he's inhabited by oh, her. Yeah. Like little character traits like that, which which really helps sell the idea. But yeah, it's I mean, both of their performances make this movie successful. And I just can't say enough about how, how good they are, mm-hmm. about how you can tell when Catherine Newton wakes up with the butcher inside of her, you can tell that is not Millie. It is just an immediate and clear switch into a different character. I yeah. Love it. And even it's so weird how even though for most of this movie, our main character is Vince Vaughn. It's Vince Vaughn. Mm-hmm. Like that's who we are with most of the time and who we are identifying with as an audience. But I'm still thinking this is a movie about a teenage girl. Yeah. The main character in this is a girl, even though most of the time it's Vince Vaughn. Yeah. I still think of this and and Happy Death Day. I'm like, yep, these are two movies about girls mm-hmm. and yeah, young women. It's neat. Yeah, so he ends up going to the... High school, obviously, because that's what you do. When oh, you- and that sweet needle drop. It's like, I forget. It's like the older song where it's... Que sera, sera I think. Que sera, right? yeah, it's que sera, yeah. Sera, you're right. As and then there's... In, it's as uh, he's walking in. Fuck, I forget what the, the song is, but it's just really good. Yeah, it's like a, a rap sounds, song that it switches into. Yeah, it's like, don't like, trust anyone. <laughs> yeah, and then people are like, is that Millie? Yeah. No. She's hot now. Yeah. She's wearing red. Yeah, she's wearing a jacket that you would wear. Yeah, I I have almost that exact same jacket. I thought so. Uh, I like too. This feels intentional. Um, because again, you who did you who's the costume designer? The um... Whitney Ann Adams. Yeah, I like this and, and you know Happy Death Day. Both. She did Happy Death Day to you. She didn't do the. First yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, I think it's all. It's like it's like her and also just Christopher Landon. Maybe in general, like they these both feel very stylized. These are like hyper realistic, like high schools they're not realistic it's like they're not not hyper realistic that's the wrong word it's like heightened reality yeah. high school um and like the colors and everything this it's like the whole beginning like we get that the high school's colors are yellow and blue and in the scene where um Millie now inhabited by Vince Vaughn is walking into the school she's wearing the red jacket and she's transformed but everyone else is still in the yellow and blue and it's like super visually obvious that mm-hmm. she's different now and I just like the the you know primary colors it's it's neat it's just a nice visual kind of thing yeah as Millie the butcher ends up murdering Ryler the main yes. bully by sticking her in a cryotherapy tank. That school's got a budget. <laughs> yeah, he pushes her into that. Yeah, it's a it's a walk in freezer for football players. Yeah. I'm assuming it seems like they they do say earlier like you can't cancel homecoming. It's like Christmas in this town. Mm-hmm. And I think they make a point a few times about how all the budget's going to the sports program. That's what our school was like. Yeah, it's ours just, too. I mean, sure. I think every school is basically like we spend money on sports. Yeah. I just remember the same year that our football team got all their stuff redesigned. It was like new logo, new like new like everything just brand new. And I remember that year in art class, my teacher the first day being like, "Okay, we can have budgets cut, so we have to spend a few minutes in class today cutting these pink erasers in half so that oh, we can God. spread them around." Yeah. <laughs> So anyway, cool stuff. Millie as the butcher also goes to the school and runs into the barking guy and like barks in his face. Like, how, how do you like it? And so between, so in that scene, Millie's discovering the advantages of being within this very powerful Vince Vaughn body. And similarly, when the cops arrive and are, are running around to find Ryler's body, uh, the butcher is learning the advantages of being inside Millie's body because they run right past him and are like, ma'am. And the the flick of recognition in his face is so good as like, oh, this has its advantages, especially because right after that, and I know we're skipping a, a, a really good scene here, but is when um, Millie as the butcher and her friends round the corner and, and see uh, it's so hard to keep track. The butcher as Millie. They and run like, into each other. Yeah, they yeah. run into each other and like, oh, that's the killer. But then uh, the butcher as Millie is like, oh my God, it's the butcher and oh uses gosh. yeah the advantage of being a teenage girl. I It's funny. Last night I was thinking after we finished watching this, I just was wondering because we have Happy Death Day and that's we have a blonde 
you know, blonde white main character. It, she's great. I, I love Jessica Roth in that movie. So good, yeah. And I'm like, okay, this one, we also have a blonde, like a white blonde teen. I'm like, you know, okay, is there a reason for that? And I'm, I actually kind of realized, I don't know, man, if you're the, the butcher and you're being put in someone else's body, it's like, maybe the safest body you could be in is like a white teenage girl. Like, oh my God, just the, ah, and of course, like no one's gonna suspect Yeah, if you play anything. it to your advantage. Oh yeah, I sure. think that's the, I think maybe that's, even if it's unintended, some kind of commentary there, just like the feigned helplessness mm -hmm. of, yeah. Uh, yes, before that, uh, we do have the scene where Millie has to convince her friends that she is in fact inside so Vince Vaughn's body. And this is, you know, the you're black, I'm gay line. They're, the chase scene, it's really fun. It's so fun. Josh is like throwing tater tots. <laughs> it's at a tater tots, <laughs> really? And yeah, and Millie's like trying to stop them, but also trying not to hurt them with her newfound her super strength. uncontrolled strength that she's never had before, yeah. which is great. And then of course, you know, you gotta have something that really clues them in for sure. So there's like a rapid fire quiz of her her tastes and it's sealed off with a secret handshake that they do yeah. that we saw and earlier. Vince Vaughn does the The, the mascots dance, yeah. which is great to see it's Vince like Vaughn. It's like a cheer about beavers and it's like unintentionally. <laughs> like shaking his ass, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's so cute. He it's, he does a very good job. Mm -hmm. Um, I just I'm all, I like I just enjoy a good sequence of they're all just they're just throwing shit at each other. It's basically just a whole sequence of let's throw every object we can at Vince Vaughn, and it's very funny. It it, it reminded me of Hubie Halloween. Oh I, yeah. I, you know I'm a simple person. <laughs> just throw some stuff at someone, and I'm laughing. That's why I love Jackass so much. Oh, Nyla also kicks her in the balls. Yeah. Uh, teaching her how painful that can be. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It is, I, I am glad the movie explores a little bit just the, like, how weird it would be to go from being a kind of like a, a slender, presumably not super physically strong teen girl to being in a six foot five serial killer body. <laughs> yeah. And like, that's something that I, you know, it, I just think about all the time. Like that would be so crazy to just live and like, imagine just being able to be the rock for 10 minutes. Yeah. Or like Braun Strowman. It's like, yeah. what is your life? Yeah. Like you could you lift, can lift a so car. I would just be lifting every, I would just be carrying all kinds of stuff. Yeah. I would go be a mover. Like I would just be, I would have, <laughs> I lift a couch. I would just lift things all day. It'd be very cool. And I'm glad the movie addresses how fucking crazy that And would vice be. versa. You see yeah. the butcher as Millie really struggle to do what would presumably be a very simple task, which would be, we oh see, and that's why that opening scene is so good because you see the ease with which he's able to murder these teens. Mm -hmm. And then when he's in Millie's body trying to do the same, he's really struggling because he fights with Alan Ruck right around here yeah. and Alan Ruck is fighting back and it's like it's self defense self defense I had dude self defense yeah. you know he was so fucking excited to claim <laughs> self defense and beat the shit out of her <laughs> self defense but yeah you, I love watching Catherine Newton as the butcher just have this realization of like oh man this it's, is tough it's in like this body it's like in Hercules where he gets his strength taken away for yeah. a little bit yeah you just you don't realize your strength until it's gone yeah and uh, that that kill is also the undisputed golden shit. Best, best kill in the this. movie. Yep. Uh, Catherine Newton um, pushing Alan Ruck on a table saw head first, just getting sawed in half, and it shows it all. It doesn't beautiful. cut away. We, show, we see the whole thing. Multiple angles. <laughs> yep, we're going like cameras, like in the middle of the body being split. Yeah, it, it's a and, practical effect. It ooh, is it's good. fucking wonderful. It's good in a in a. Prop warehouse in Burbank. There is an Allen Ruck that is in two pieces, and it's just chilling there. I I wonder if any or if anyone took it. If I was Allen Ruck, like if I were in oh, any horror movie, and there's any prop of me, like how uh, we know David Naughton uh, had his ice cream cone head from Ice Cream Man, which Clint Howard used this year for Halloween. Yep. Um, which I love. <laughs> but yeah, I would demand that I get to keep that. I know that'd be so. Cool. Yeah, but I like I said this on Twitter, but just there's something about like. First of all, a saw and half kill is is gruesome either way, whether you're starting like, you know, balls or badge first <laughs> or head first. And like going, you know, you know, bottom up is brutal for obvious reasons. It's slow, you don't die right away. And it's the it's the crotch region, which is uh very sensitive. But there is something fucked up about a head first kill like in this, because he doesn't have to keep pushing the body 
down the 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 table saw. You know, you cut the head in half and you're good. Versus like they're that, they're yeah. extremely dead. But you know, nope, he just is a total sicko <laughs> and just keep you, you know, why not? He's well, an it's artist. Easier cleanup later. I guess, yeah. yeah. But I, I don't know. There's something something a little fucked up about that too that I appreciate. <laughs> yeah, we wind up at the mini golf place. Oh yeah. Which is it looks like a laser tag place. Yeah. That, it's black lights everywhere and apparently skeletons. they just found Confirmed by Michael Kennedy on Twitter, this filming location was already a haunted mini golf with skeletons and that place. Where looks the so where is that? Because cool. I want to live there. Yeah, there's two skeletons, and I wish I could put the clip that I couldn't stop noticing this time. <laughs> um, it's like right around when uh they grab Booker. Um, I forget why. Oh, it's because they witness or because Booker like witnesses them um fucking up. The, I, I forget what exactly I think happens to that part. Millie as the butcher knocks out the butcher as Millie. Okay, yeah. But and Booker, Booker sees, sees that it. and thinks right, it's so the butcher. Like, Fuck, yeah. we have to catch Booker because he's a witness and he's cops, just going to tell yeah. the cops. So they're chasing him around. And yeah, there's these two skeletons and <laughs> it looks like they're, it's like a talk show setup almost because one of them's <laughs> on a chair and the other one's on a couch and they both have their like one arm up like they're laughing and... <laughs> I just really like it. Yeah. <laughs> like, I don't know why a spooky talk show, but sure. <laughs> yeah, it's a great setting for this little sequence. It's and very good. Uh, I have to assume it's around in the Atlanta area because I believe that's where this was shot, as many things are shot nowadays. I love, I pretty much just, I think I just like stuff set in either fun houses or stuff like a mini, you know, like this mini golf or, um, like in in good time, remember? There's like they go in the fun house. I think it's oh. a fun house in that. Oh yeah, something like that. Yeah, for sure. I, I just I'm always into that aesthetic. It's good. Yeah, it's just a fun like you can have stuff pop out at you and like confuse the characters yeah. and everything looks cool and it's colorful. Yeah, like like actually scary stuff happening in a place where it's like scary, quote unquote. Like no one's actually that scared during a carnival style fun house, like mm. a. A boo house is, I think, what they're called. Oh, yeah. Where it's just skeletons popping out at you. <laughs> There's not even real people in there. Um, one line I really enjoy in this scene is when uh, the butcher, as Millie, leans over to the one, like, jock. And is she goes, your touch makes this pussy drier than sandpaper, you fucking monkey. <laughs> <laughs> Her delivery is really good. Feminist icon. Um, <laughs> love it. Yes. Yeah, so they go to Josh's house where... They tie up the butcher mm -hmm. and then uh, leave Josh with the butcher to watch over him while they go to... Um, they go it, to the police station. Yeah, and they convince Booker that it is <gasps> Millie in the butcher's body I want, okay. because Millie recites a poem I, that she wrote for him and left in his locker. I loved it. Like, watching this again, I liked the scene even more. Because at first you don't know what... Yeah, because she's saying because Vince Vaughn all of a sudden starts reciting a sonnet like what the I don't know what it is, but it's a very long and almost shakes like just very flowery poem mm -hmm. to Booker, and you can see Booker start to realize, oh my god, it's Booker's Millie. acting really sells it. That actor, he's really acting. good, yeah. yeah. But Vince Vaughn also like really puts his heart into the sonnet, and it, I genuinely was like, oh my god, it's romantic, like it's romantic <laughs> and really sweet. Yeah. Yeah, so they successfully... And it was have... a note that she left in Booker's locker, and that's mm -hmm. how he... It was an anonymous poem. So, so. clearly... That and that's also, yeah, her better. confessing, I left that in your locker. Yep. So... And being more confident. Mm -hmm. So Millie, Nyla, and Booker go to the police station so that they can get the dagger mm -hmm. and complete this so ritual before midnight. Yes. Uh, while Josh is left watching over Millie. Who is, mm -hmm. uh, or I'm sorry, watching over the butcher who's all tied up. Yeah. And this is a great scene. It's just such a funny gag and like just like a very simple joke setup. And the way they sell it is so funny when Josh's mom comes <sighs> home and she, she sees Joshua with a tied up who she assumes is just Millie mm -hmm. and is like, I'm sorry, what is what's going on here? Joshua says, uh, We're role playing and. His mom maybe correctly assumes this seems like a sexual kind of role play. Then Joshua comes out as straight and it's a very silly gag where the mom's like, I'm sorry. I know you're, you're like, yeah, it's you're, like you're a lot of things. You're, you're not, not straight. straight. Yeah. She's, yeah, she's a great like she's such a great 
character that we don't see for very long, but she seems like just a mom who like really genuinely loves her son for who he is. There's even pictures of them on the wall. And I was saying <laughs> that these two would be, they would, w they would win mother boy by like astronomical. Like you think they would be, uh, Lucille and Lucille and Buster. Oh man, that'd be tough. That'd be tough. It would be tough. I I think, I think they might have an edge because Joshua doesn't seem terrified of his mom. <laughs> what about Lucille and Michael Sarah filling in for Buster? Oh, that's tough. That's a tough one. He's a good little girl. I'm a good little girl. <laughs> yeah, that's tough. I don't know. I would like to see it. So <laughs> yeah, well, show us. Show us. <laughs> uh, yeah, they Millie eventually escapes being tied up and has a little chase scene with Josh and his mom. That's when we get the shining, shining reference and of the knife through the door. I noticed the shining reference the first time because I mean the knife it's through not, the door. Yeah, knife through the door is whatever. But, but what I didn't notice the is the low angle up on uh, Millie yeah, or on the butcher as Millie, and the fact that she's wearing a red jacket yeah. like Jack Nicholson is, and on top of that, Joshua is wearing a blue denim jacket jacket over a blue shirt and it's like the blue bathrobe that Shelly Duvall is oh, wearing. And it just, nice. it, it was like just nice little, like there's like nods on top of I wonder if that was nods. like Christopher or Whitney with those decisions. Cause right. She, Cause she snuck in, uh, in the, uh, party scene at the end at the mill. She pointed out on Twitter, there's like an extra wearing a Freddy Krueger inspired oh, really? get up. Yeah. That's so, fun. uh, while Nyla's trying to get Ladola from inside the police station, we have the best scene of the movie, perhaps. Yeah. I, I think it's the best scene when it's, uh, Booker in the car with Millie in the butcher's body. And they just talk about how like, oh yeah, Booker's always liked her too. And, and Millie's feeling more confident yeah. in this body. And then he, he's like, can I? come sit back there with you because he's in the front seat and he does. And he's just like, is it weird that I want to kiss you right now? And then they, they do kiss, mm -hmm. uh, which like, yeah, it's a good moment. Yeah, like they, they you know, and I appreciated that they didn't just tease the audience with a, oh, we might get a, a gay kiss in this or on the surface is like a gay kiss. Mm -hmm. It's complicated because again, <laughs> the body swap, but you know, they actually do it. They don't they don't just have them chicken out like, oh, eh, it's weird. I mean, the hand goes up pretty yeah. fast and I mean, blocks a lot of it. So it could be like a tight, yeah. like, like a peck thing, but, but it's still, it still happens. It's a sweet moment. It's a sweet moment. And, and I and like that it shows, they don't have Booker be the one who's like, actually, no, this is weird. It's Millie who is like, no, this is weird. I'm in a serial killer body. Yeah. Booker is just like 100% into her and is like, I'll make out with you. It's, it's just a great, and, and it's never said explicitly, but obviously the message is like, you know, you love the person for who they are. Yeah. It's yeah. great. It's it's such a sweet scene and it's still funny, but no, it's not funny because there's gay undertones. It's not funny because, oh, it's it's a dude who, you know, it's two dudes and uh, yeah. in a movie made in the 2000s, this scene would be so much meaner. <laughs> yeah. But like, I don't know. I just, the scene just is so genuine to me. And I think this is maybe also the scene that made me, want to label Booker as a himbo. Like, it's very sweet himbo, but where he's like, you know what? It's it's not just, you know, it's it's what's up here. And, and here where he's pointing his head and his heart. And it's like, oh, you're just very sweet, basic uh, <laughs> advice from, but like, yeah, you know, just pretty generic. Like, it's about what's inside. Like, thank you, Booker. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant insight. You're so sweet and basic and we love you. <laughs> but really, really cute scene. And they both, both the actors really sell it and again it, especially someone like you know maybe an older actor like a Vince Vaughn I could see that actor selling it as like oh it's a joke or you could tell their performance is underlined by some discomfort or just like oh this is weird but mm -hmm. no he's like he's in like 100% like yep this is he know understands this scene is sweet and I saw Michael Kennedy tweet that like that scene especially meant so much to see done, like to oh, see yeah. be made and, and done and done so sincerely by both the actors in it. Yeah, it's real cute. Uh, you know, characters are running all around the police station. Charlene a, shows up yeah. and is a bad cop <laughs> and uh, the butcher, like it ends up with the butcher escaping in the police car to go to the mill for a party that he set up. He was like, Hey, we can go party at the mill. Uh, since what, there's like a curfew or some shit going mm -hmm. on for the homecoming dance. He's like, we can have the homecoming dance at the mill mm -hmm. where I live and kill people. Yeah. So there's a big old party going there and that's where they go. A uh, bunch of football players 
get murdered. Oh, including yeah. Including that guy who was hitting on, uh, who he thought was Millie yeah, earlier. Yeah, dry ass pussy. Yeah. <laughs> that guy looks like Ben Shapiro. I It can't have been on purpose because that wouldn't make a sense. I feel like Ben Shapiro being upset about WAP was too recent. <laughs> but this guy kind of looks like him. Was it that guy or is it, is it another one who looks like him? They all kind of, they're all just, they're just dogs. Yeah, because three of them take Millie or take the butcher back and like it uh, sounds like they're they're about to it was, gang gonna, it was gonna yeah. be a, yeah it was gonna yeah, be a gang like, rape you got three holes you got three holes yeah man. and uh <laughs> he kills them which is great i do enjoy a good uh you know if you're killing rapey jocks in your movie i i enjoy it freddie versus jason that yeah happens. it's good uh and then a fourth football player like when josh gets there and is looking for Mil- millie this fourth football player is like, oh, yeah, I'll show you, Millie. And he takes Josh away and then kisses Josh because I guess this is one of those, like, straight guys trying to be uh, experiment. And then when Josh pulls away, you know, he throws a slur at him. Mm-hmm. And uh, then that guy promptly gets killed <laughs> by the book. Yeah, yeah. Which I think is another Friday the 13th reference when the hook comes in and stabs him. That happens to a victim in, I forget which movie, I think the seventh one. But in the Friday the 13th one, I think it is the seventh one because by that point in the series, it's getting censored a lot. And that mm. kill, I believe I gave the doll machete because it was so off screen. Whereas in this movie, they do a Friday the 13th kill and it's gorier, which is great. Oh, you get to actually see it. Yeah. It's funny. Just at that part, when the, I saw the, the hook hand, I went, oh, Candyman? Or no, I know what you did last summer. Is that, it might just be a hook hand. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes a hook hand is just a hook hand. Yes. So yeah, midnight's approaching. So there's a lot of uh, I don't know, chasing and we're running, running around, around. Lots of running around. We <laughs> for fi- for we- some reason, Millie can't run that fast in the butcher's body. Yeah, I guess he doesn't do cardio. It's it's funny. He's like it's like in a video game where you pick your character and it's like <laughs> predetermined. It's like randomly generated. Yeah, strength stats. is maxed out. She, yeah, the like maxed is out strength. But is that like, just a commentary on like how? Killers and slashers are always I think walking it might around be, yeah. and they never run. I think it might be. <laughs> That's Just, funny. Yeah, they can't be fast also. Yeah, fucking Nyla uh, tackles the butcher to the ground. <laughs> it, it's almost like a bulldog move. It's great. Yeah. <laughs> This so they they hold they hold down the butcher as Millie so that we can do the stab and have the body switch. This part I I hate that I noticed this Mm -hmm. because Millie hears her watch go off and denoting that's denoting that it's midnight too late and but they realize oh wait Millie always sets her watch to be early because it was a piece of advice Booker gave her so that she doesn't run late for class anymore Mm -hmm. but. Millie, like it is, it is. So is that Millie, Millie's watch? It's Millie. Yes, it's Millie as the butch. It has to be Millie's watch because it's early. I guess you could argue that possibly uh, when the, Millie woke up in the butcher, oh, and she said he her. had a watch that which I don't think he would have a watch. I don't think, but he that would. she put that on and then also followed Booker's advice even while confused. That so that doesn't check out. Yeah. Right. So I hate that I noticed this. Yeah, but it's Millie's watch on, on the, the butcher, butcher's which body. she wouldn't. She never went to her house as mm-hmm. like she it just I like when would that have happened? It's such a little thing. But it's a I little thing. Hate but you had a good fix that it's just like the uh, Oh, just the, have Millie it's still be on Millie's body, but it goes off and they're like grabbing her wrist or his wrist and looking at it. And, yeah. I don't know. Just a little thing. It doesn't act really matter that much. Mm-hmm. But yeah, so it's not actually midnight. Yeah. It's five minutes too, and so they're able to stab and do the little switcheroo. Yeah, and the swap happens, but oops, we didn't uh realize, yeah, we probably should have restrained uh Vince or oh, man. these damn lights. <laughs> we probably should have restrained the butcher's body as well, even though oh, you're yeah. you're Millie Whoops. and his body, but oops, we didn't think once the switch happens, you're just free. And that's when the cops show up and Joshua just yells, shoot this motherfucker. And the cops do you I can't know you just can't do take that. orders from a random citizen. Random teen, random excited teen. <laughs> you can't just do that. And he's just standing there. Anyway, worst cops ever. Worst cops ever, because then they're transporting the butcher. To the who, worst now they're EMTs in the right bodies. ever. Yeah. Oh, it's, it's not the cops in the back. It's EMTs. I think it's EMTs. Yeah. They're, they... they're transporting his body and they're like, I wish I wouldn't mind if he died. And yeah. then it flatlines, but it's because what? It he just... took off his, his, uh, pul- the like pulse monitor you put on your finger. They didn't notice. I he guess. just slipped. And it's like, <sighs> 
Just bad, bad EMTs. Yeah. Why is everyone employed by the city in this just from an <laughs> instructional video you watch at work? Just this is how not to do your job. Anyway, yeah. So this is like the end where the the butcher who is now, you know, we were switched back to our original bodies. The butcher shows up at their house. Mm -hmm. And this is the first actual dialogue we get of Vince Vaughn as the butcher which is nice it's so much scarier I like that we have it saved for later mm -hmm. and I guess yeah it's cool that the although I realize yeah you can't have him be a, a hulking silent killer like a Jason or because then you, what's the body swap even yeah I guess you could just have Catherine Newton not talk but that sucks no it's dumb but yeah, so we hear Vince Vaughn actually talk as the killer at the end. He's terrifying. Mm -hmm. He's he really is the perfect build for a, is, a horror yeah, movie villain. Sure. Yeah. So there's a there's a fight scene. Uh, women getting it done after Shar is again the worst cop in the world. Worst and cop ever. Could have shot herself in the face. Yep. And <laughs> uh, I think it ends with a, a ball kick. So yes. That's, that's his weakness. Yeah. That's like, yeah the callback. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, and then she like stabs him in the spine with something. It's a, I think it's a chair. It's a chair leg. Yeah. Very pointy. But she like puts it right in the middle of his back. Like that's hitting bone. And then she shoves it through so it comes out the front. Yeah. And her mom is just watching like, oh, yeah, that's my daughter. That's my girl. Women. <laughs> Women are strong and beautiful and powerful. And then I am and a this fucking is, piece. This, yeah. The, you know, when you're confident, you can shove a chair leg through a whole body and not. Not even, no problem. Yep. Confidence, feminism. <laughs> I yeah. She says, "I am a fucking piece," and that's the last line. It's good. Yeah. It's yeah. Like it's a bit. The end is a bit. It's over the top. Like it's the it's the all you know the all female. It's like Halloween twenty eighteen. It, it reminded yeah. me of Halloween. Yeah, it reminded me of the the new Halloween movie, and it it reminded me also of the end of that that new Black Christmas, which I did not think <sighs> achieved that moment. Oh. I it wanted it wanted God. to do what the end of this did and mm -hmm. it didn't pull it off. But the end of this, I think because the rest of the movie is goofy enough that we get kind of a silly like girl power yeah. <laughs> ending. But yeah, so that's that's freaky. I want to see a sequel crossover where her, where Millie's mom, who is widowed, marries Tree's dad, who is widowed, and now they're stepsisters. And there's like some... Across. There's something. I know. I wonder what high concept comedic premise they could take that. Yeah. You know, like after Grounds, they don't look, they're not Day like Friday. they're not secret twins or right? they can't do parent trap. No. Like, oh, yeah. But that's a good idea. Yeah. But I, yeah. I wonder if you have ideas for what, uh, what yeah, high, con high concept comedy. movie, yeah, movie comedy that they could do as the sequel where they are stepsisters. Now. Yes. Picture suggestions in the I comments. want it I to want happen. To I think yeah. it would be fantastic. Jessica Roth tweeted that she wants a crossover. So there you go. The people want it. Uh, yes. Excuse our very dark video if you're watching this. Yeah, I mean, I'm going to color correct it, but if it looks <laughs> oh, fucked no, up, it's, it's, it's fucked why. Up. It's because our we got new lights for the podcast studio, but it turns out uh, they're not great. And they're bad. Yeah, they're battery they're powered. Bad. So the batteries die. I don't know. It's real dumb. I'm sorry for buying them. But next week. Uh, we're finishing off the year. Yeah, right? I didn't. Our last I didn't realize that. I totally forgot. Next week is the last episode for the year. But we're gonna review Possessor, which I've been dying to watch, and a lot of people have recommended. I have no idea what it's about. I have no idea what it's. about. I have avoided learning what it's about. I just know that it is a a uh, Cronenberg's son making a movie, oh. and he is you know like father like son apparently. <laughs> so I'm I'm excited. Cool. For it. Yeah. yeah. We'll check that out. I ordered the Blu-ray. It should be here tomorrow. So. Perfect. And watch that boy. Uh, in the meantime, you can follow Dead Meat on social media at Dead Meat James on Twitter and Instagram. And I'm at Care Beck, C R E B E C C, on Twitter and Instagram. And if you want merch, deadmeatstore.com. Yes. Feel free to email deadmeatpod at gmail.com with uh, fun feedback and comments. There's also the Dead Meat subreddit. Check that out. Oh, it's yeah. It's a fun place to hang out. I even, I comment every once in a while. I I check it I out every day. Oh really? Times a day. Oh yeah. I'm always scared to read any subreddit that's about something I do. It's a little scary, it's but I also the... search for myself on Reddit and Twitter. You're a maniac. I, I could never. I am. That's why I saw that. That's how I saw that himbo comment. I, I wasn't tagged. I, I refuse. just searched by name. People are too mean. I refuse to search myself. I know. And th and then when people don't tag me, I'm like, all right, James. Then you don't have the right to respond because like if they were tagging you, that'd be one name thing. Name search, dude. But name yeah, search, name, name searching and then being like. 
cringe. Well, actually, I'm not a himbo. It's like, always cringe when it, when someone name searches. Yeah, well, we all do it. I don't do it. Well, <laughs> I do it, and that's okay. Uh, we'll be back next week with Possessor and a much better lit set. Yeah. But until then, I'm James. I'm Chelsea. This has been the Dead Meat Podcast.